Hello and welcome to Alessandra Basics and Methods of Interaction. Uh, my name is Obi Omanunachi. I am an apprentice with Nant Corporation in DC. Um, so our plan for today is to talk about Alessandra, obviously. Um, but we're going to go through these individual sections of what is Alessandra, why should you use it, um, how to get set up, uh, how you add data into Alessandra, how you get data out of Alessandra with normal queries, and then how you get data out of Alessandra using search terms. So starting off, um, Alessandra is an open source project with the goal of integrating Apache Cassandra and Elasticsearch. Um, Apache Cassandra is a NoSQL database tool and Elasticsearch is another open source um, data storage tool that its main draw is that it's, it comes with search capability out of the box. Um, it does this by mapping concepts from one onto the other um, by backing the data storage in that would normally be used for Elasticsearch with data storage from Cassandra. Um, so it allows search, high-speed search operations, as well as access to all of Elasticsearch's normal APIs and plugins, while also giving the advantages of Cassandra, um, which are in its scalability and its masterless architecture, which allows it to be widely distributed. Um, if you look over on the right of the screen, um, this is an example of Alessandra's architecture style. Um, where a Cassandra virtual data center contains Cassandra nodes as well as Elasticsearch indices. Um, and applications can interact both through a REST API or through SQL with either of these data storage indices. Um, so the comparison here, uh, the reason why you would want to use Alessandra over either Elasticsearch or Cassandra alone is that you get better scalability and distribution than if you had just used Elasticsearch and you get the advantages, you get the advantages of um, Cassandra's masterless architecture over Cassandra's, which is mastered and is thus vulnerable to errors in that architecture. Um, Obviously, you get search capability, which Cassandra itself does not provide, um, and you get access to Elasticsearch numerous REST APIs, as well as Cassandra's CQL query language. Um, and over on the right, you can see the architectures with those individual technologies, where Elasticsearch has a master node, um, which other nodes communicate with, and Alessandra is a masterless ring architecture where nodes communicate to each other. For setting up Alessandra in the first place, there are several methods you can use, but the one that is the easiest to set up um, is their Docker image that they provide. Um, so generally, if you were on Linux, you would just open a terminal um, or Mac, but on Windows, you would need to have the Docker installed um, and open up the Docker terminal. Um, you would then pull their image, which is at data slash Alessandra. Um, and then you want to make sure all your settings are correct. Um, if you are on Windows before the sysctl um, command, you need to SSH into Docker machine um, because that's where those settings are stored on Windows. Um, but on Linux, you can just run this command. And what this command does is it increases the amount of memory available to um, Docker containers that are brought up on this machine, which is necessary because Elasticsearch or Alessandra um, and Cassandra to a lesser extent take a large amount of memory. Um, and then you want to run your container. In this case, we're also um, using settings that offer it um, extended memory mapping capability. Um, and we are running it in the dark container named ELS. So this presentation is Alessandra Basics, but the focus here is on the different methods of interaction. Um, so if you were using Cassandra alone, you'd have access to CQL, um, which is Cassandra's query language. 
Um, in Alessandra, you can adapt it to you perform Elasticsearch's functions, including search, um, putting data, querying data, which it already does. You can also use Elasticsearch's REST API, um, which can do all the same interactions, um, but instead of being solely backed by those Elasticsearch indices, um, they're also backed by Cassandra tables. Um, and both of those methods can be adapted into pretty much any backend programming language um, via Cassandra's drivers or um, Elasticsearch's APIs or the language's inbuilt request functionality. If you want to add data using CQL, um, you need to go into a few steps. Um, but the first thing we need to do is define what data is going to be stored. In this case, the example we're using is user ID, which is an integer var valued variable, and username, which is a text valued variable. It's a very simple table, um, and it should work well for our examples. But before we can actually bring up data in, or before we can actually add our data in CQL, we need somewhere to add it to. Um, so step one of that is bringing up the SQL shell, um, which we are running in our Docker container that Alessandra is running in using the command docker exec dash it ELS SQL shell. Um, and then once that is up, uh, we need to create a key space, um, which is a Cassandra term. Essentially, it is the top level data storage. Um, and then within that key space, we need to create a table using a particular schema. Um, and that's where we define that we have UID, which is an integer, and username, which is a text. And we also tell Cassandra which one of them is our primary key, which is what Cassandra uses to sort data um, primarily. Now that we can finally get to actually adding our data, um, we want to say insert into, we need to give it the correct table, which in this case is test.docs. Um, the schema of that table, or at least the, num the name of the fields within it, um, and then our values that we're putting inside. Um, and then if you choose to interact with your Alessandra instance via CQL, you need to manually create the associated Elasticsearch index, or you won't be able to send um, any REST API requests. Um, and the way you do that is you use curl to request and you need to put the mapping um, and it will actually discover um, the schema that is in the associated Cassandra table when you give this command. Alternatively, you can add data using the REST API. Um, be when we were interacting with CQL, we had to create the associated Elasticsearch index manually. But in this case, if you create the Elasticsearch index manually, um, if you create the Elasticsearch index first via the REST API, an associated Cassandra table is created automatically. Um, in this case, we want to run all our curl commands in the Docker container as well. Um, so all the curl commands you will be seeing in this presentation can be preceded with docker exec it ELS. Um, which basically it runs whatever command follows that in the Docker container named ELS. In this case, we want to put the mapping, um, which is like the table schema for Cassandra. Um, it defines the data that's going in, what the types are, um, and what the names of those fields are. And then to add the data, you do a similar curl request, this time a post rather than a put. Um, and you just need to give it in JSON um, the fields and the values that will go into those fields. All right, so in this case, what I mean by querying data is that you want to give it a specific value and then the, and then Alessandra will give you back the data associated with that particular value. 
Um, so in this first example, um, we are running a CQL query, select star from, which means we're getting all the fields out of our table. Um, Test.docs is our table where UID, the user ID field, equals one, um, which means all of the examples in our table where that is true, where user ID is one, uh, will be returned. And you can also cut down on which fields are being returned. Um, in the second statement, we are only selecting username to be returned. Um, and the second statement also omits where, which means every single record um, inside of that table is going to be returned, but only the username associated with it. <coughs> In order to query data from the REST API, um, we have another curl request. This one is a get, um, and you want to send query, uh, which will contain terms with a list of whatever terms you are trying to get. Um, and the user ID is the one that we are using in this case. Um, you can see opposite that there is a list containing a single value. You can extend that to query um, with multiple terms. Uh, so if there were one, two, and three all in that list, we get the user IDs, or we would get the documents with all the data inside them. Uh, corresponding to the user IDs one, two, and three. In order to search um, using the, the Elasticsearch REST API in Alessandra, um, it's just like searching in Elasticsearch. You send in a query with a defined type. In this case, uh, we're going over match all, match, and match phrase, uh, which all provide different functionality. In this case, um, in this first case, match all is empty, the query. Um, so it will return all of the, the documents that we have stored. Um, but there is a second phrase here, sort. Um, and it's sorting by user ID and ascending value. In the second term, um, this is where you would be able to differentiate what match all specifically does over the other types. Um, and essentially what it does is it looks for a perfect match of the search term provided in your results. Match is a different query, um, which just attempts to match any term within the field to um, the fields in the documents. Uh, so in this case, we can put in partially um, what the field is, um, or we can even put in several terms uh, in a single, um, like not separated by commas statement, and it will search for any or all of them within the username field. Um, so if we searched for Roy, or if we searched for um, Roy space ER, um, it would search for both of those sub both of those words essentially um, within the larger field username when you run this query. What match phrase is it match does what match phrase does is it matches the entire search phrase to any document fields you give it. Um, so in this case, even if we had uh, multiple words separated by spaces, which we were searching in our username field, um, the result would have to match that phrase exactly the entire thing. Um, so the words would all have to show up in that exact order rather than the um, rather than containing one of the words that is in our search query. Um, Elasticsearch also offers methods for filtering your results or excluding the results that you don't want to come up, um, which make for more complicated queries. And you can find details on that in the Elasticsearch documentation. <coughs> Cassandra does not normally offer search. Um, so the way that Alessandra gets around this to allow you to search via CQL, um, the first thing you need to do is you need to modify your table to have two more fields, which are ES underscore query and ES underscore options, both of which are text fields. Um, 
which Alessandra will populate. And then you can um, use CQL to give it a query, which is presented in the same JSON format as, your, um, as in your REST API queries. Um, and it will give you your results in the CQL shell or through whatever um, driver you may be using that allows you to interact with a normal Cassandra table. Cassandra also um, has drivers in a variety of different languages, like I mentioned earlier. And Elasticsearch also um, comes with client drivers, as well any language that allows you to make um, requests similar to curl requests um, will allow you to interact on the Elasticsearch side. In conclusion, uh, Alessandra is a tool that provides search functionality and also um, can act as a primary data store. It takes very good care of your data. Um, and it does this by combining the traits of Apache, Cassandra, and Elasticsearch, which enables users and applications to be able to interact with that data um, in two main ways, which are Cassandra's normal method, CQL, or REST APIs, Elasticsearch's normal method. Okay, uh, so moving on to a short demo. First thing we want to do is we want to run our Alessandra container. Oh, uh, I forgot. These are the lists of um, all of the possible client drivers for Apache Cassandra. And for Elasticsearch, as you can see, it comes in a large number of programming languages. And Elasticsearch also does. Okay, we can confirm that our Alessandra is instance is up um, by just running a curl request to localhost 9200, which is where the um, endpoint for Elasticsearch interaction is. All right, and we get back our default page, which means that Alessandra is now up. So we're going to be primarily using the CQL methods um, for this, uh, but as mentioned earlier, even the CQL methods do sometimes require interaction via the REST API. Can bring up our SQL shell. Just going to... All right, we want to create our key space. and create our table. Before adding data. And we can 
also insert the data that we put in. REST API. And now we want to use a curl request We're using the curl request to make the associated Elasticsearch index. Okay, we now have an index named test. And one of the ways that we can see that is that we do get a response um, when we make a request. to that location, to that endpoint. We can go back into the SQL shell um, in order to query data. And we can see all of our queries used in examples in the presentation, um, doing that to return data. And then, as was mentioned earlier, in order to search using the CQL shell, you need to alter your table to have two additional fields. Now, in order to search, sorry, one sec. Remember that we are constructing our queries is like exactly the same as we would if we were sending them via REST API.
Okay. Um, so I've been trying to get the search via CQL working. Um, and I thought that maybe one of the ways to do that would be to rediscover um, the mapping uh, from the CQL table to the Elasticsearch index. Um, but I am having trouble doing that. Uh, so I just want to take a second to make sure that searching the adjust the rest API is functional. Um, so we want to do that via curl request. Finally, we get to our actually our actual query. Ah, uh, we forgot the quotes around the query itself. Interesting. It looks like we're getting our actual searches, uh, but it looks like the queries work differently than how I may have conceptualized them. So in this case, we get our result when using match to search for the full name against the full name. Uh, which would lead me to believe that um, Elasticsearch finds full words within queries that are only a single word. Uh, so we can't match just part of a word. Interesting. But let's try it in the CQL one more time.
That's better. Still the same error. Hmm. All right, well, something to look into later. All right, uh, so we've been having some technical, technical difficulties um, with the search uh, through CQL, um, and this sort of thing happens. Um, once it's figured out, you can expect a comment underneath this video somewhere um, explaining how to get around it. Um, but in this case, we're just going to move on to our conclusion. So like I said, I'm an apprentice at Not Corporation. Um, feel free to contact us if you're interested in working with us or would like to learn more about anything talked about today. Um, and with that, I will open it up for questions. Hey, Obi, I have a question. Okay. So when you're kind of instantiating the Alessandra, um, is it restricted to curls or would you be able to use uh, like a secondary service like Postman, because it's pretty much the same concept, right? Where it's you're just making a request with specific parameters. Yeah. Um, uh, so in this case, anything that can make requests will do. Um, in the specific case of the setup used for this, um, which is a Docker um, container set up using Docker for Windows, um, that's harder because to interact with Docker containers um, via the network, you need to either be within that Docker container or in another Docker container on the same system. Um, so if right now I opened up Postman on this computer and tried to interact with it, it would not work. But generally that is an option that's available to you. Cool, thanks. Okay, uh, any more questions? Okay, I guess that's it. Thank you for watching. Uh, have a nice day.